Hey guys, I am back from New York and BEA was a great time. This was my fourth year and it was really, really wonderful. I met some awesome people, got to see some people that I absolutely love again, and I got to talk to people about some great books and pick up a few for myself. I don't really pick up a lot at BEA because I have like lots of bookshelf guilt right now as it is. I picked up 25 books like six or seven of them were from the actual Javits floor where the signings and the galley drops were taking place. The rest were from various events that I was able to go to. So I was really happy with what I did end up with. There was a couple books that I wish that I had picked up, but I know that I can buy them or go to the library or something like that. So I'm going to try to make this haul pretty short, but give you enough about the books because I'm very excited about all of them. So if you read my blog, you know the one that I was most excited for, like the I have to have this one and I don't care what else I get the whole week one. And that is I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson. <sighs> I got it signed and I met her and I was able to tell her how much I loved her first book, The Sky is Everywhere. <sighs> I'm Her writing is just gorgeous. Just, I don't know. You have to really like metaphors and just pretty kind of writing but her stories are just always very like they hit you right here. This one is about twins and I am like 40 pages into it. I'm already really smitten with it and I cannot wait to keep reading. The next book that I got from the Javits Floor is Jessica Darling's It List. This is the second book in the prequel to the Jessica Darling series by Megan McCafferty, which is a series like you have to read if you like young adult, like you just have to. It's an older series and Megan just came out with this prequel like a year or two ago. So this is the second one and I have like the best, most hilarious story ever. I was going, I wanted this book but I haven't read the first one yet, but I went in line to get my friend Anna, who is the biggest Megan McCafferty fan in the entire world, and she wasn't able to go to BA, and Megan and Anna had met the year before, and it was like the cutest reunion. They looked at each other, and they're like, it's you, and started crying, and I started crying while I was watching this reunion, and so I went up to Megan, and she signed it. I was telling her that it was for Anna, and I said, can you just do a quick video so I can send to Anna, like, you know, thinking like a hi, I miss you, whatever. No, Megan McCafferty sings Barry Manilow into my camera for Anna, and it was the most hilarious thing. Everyone was staring like, what the hell's going on? But it was the best thing ever. So I can't wait to catch up and read the first one and then read this. They're pretty thin and funny. I just love Meg McCafferty. The next one is Bells Are by Meg Wolitzer. Meg writes adult fiction and this is her first young adult book and I'm very excited for it because it is a young adult retelling of The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath in The Bell Jar. I don't know what this says about me but <laughs> The Bell Jar was one of my favorite favorite books in high school and college and I want to reread it again soon because it's been a while. Maybe I'll reread it well before I read this. But I am very excited for this. The next is Rooms by the infamous Lauren Oliver. I've read her Delirium series and I just really like her writing. This is her first adult book and it sounds creepy and I just can't wait to see what she does in the adult world. I mean her writing is just so excellent that I know she's going to weave this like creepy story with this beautiful prose that she does. So I am very excited for this. If Even if you don't really read adult fiction that often, I would definitely check this one out. The next one I got on the floor is Conversion by Katherine Howe. Basically it takes place in this school and all of a sudden all the girls are like falling ill and like having convulsions and they are like just strange things are going on. Nobody can figure out if there's like some sort of disease or pollution or something that's making these girls do it or if they're faking. So it's kind of taking that colonial um, story of like Salem and putting it into modern times and I am so excited for this. I cannot even begin to tell you because it sounds freaking awesome. The next one I picked up was one that I hadn't heard about prior to BEA which is rare for me because 
I will only really pick up books I haven't heard of if a publicist or somebody does a really good job of selling it to me. This is one that I think Hannah from So Obsessed With vlog was talking about and I looked it up on Goodreads while I was in the Javits Center and I had to have it. It's an adult book and it's called Bitter Greens and it is a Rapunzel retelling. It sounds wonderful. I loved Rapunzel when, growing up and I'm very, very excited that she was talking about wanting to snag this because then I did too. The last one I picked up while I was on the floor is a big compilation of three Jill Shalvis books. They're part of the Lucky Harbor series. I don't remember which ones they are. If they're like number three or four, I don't know. I just know there's three of them in there. I have read the first Lucky Harbor novel. It's contemporary romance. Really good. Once I saw this was on the floor, I knew I planned on finishing the series, so I was like, well, I'll have three of them instead of having to get them for my library. If you like adult contemporary romance, I would definitely, definitely check out Jill Shalvis. Part of the other fun of BEA sometimes is the events that you might get invited to, and I was very, very fortunate again this year to be invited to some really great events, and sometimes they send you away with books. I gave away a lot of the books that I got from different events to other people because I either had them or I wasn't interested in them, so I don't have a list of what those were, but I'm just going to talk about what I ended up keeping. first one was at a wonderful brunch that uh, Bloomsbury hosted, and everyone was excited for this one, Air of Fire by Sarah J Moss. Right before BEA, over Memorial Day weekend, I finally read Throne of Glass, and I really liked it, and everyone was like, oh my god, Crown of Midnight's so much better, and everybody was freaking out for this at BEA. The, her line started, like, right as soon as the floor opened, and I don't think her signing was until 11. It was ridiculous, and look how thick this thing is. It's ridiculous, and apparently the people who have read it already, everyone's freaking out. So I think I'm going to binge read Crown of Midnight and Air of Fire. Um, it's part of a series, a fantasy series, and I think it's going to be six books if I remember correctly. But I'm very into the series and everybody who has been pushing this on me, they were right. They were absolutely right. It is excellent. So if you like fantasy, I would definitely check out Throne of Glass by Sarah J Moss. And the next one was Not in the Script by Amy Finnegan. It's about a girl who is on a reality show called Coyote Hills. It's the third novel in Bloomsbury's If Only series, but it's like they're they're just like love stories. They're not actually like part of a series. There's not the same characters. Like the first one I read I talked about before was Wish You Were Italian by Kristen Ray. And so this one sounds like a cute romance about a girl who's on a reality show who falls in love with her co-star. But she's had a really bad time with on-set relationships. So it sounds really cute. One of the best things I got invited to, I think, was the Little Brown Brunch. They really they had really good breakfast sandwiches, mimosas, and they really talked about their fall catalog, which was great because I've been a little bit behind on creep in all the catalogs. So I found out about a lot of books that I had never heard of. First one is The Walled City. I don't really know a ton about this one other than the fact that there's gender bending in it and there is this walled city that these three teens live in and they really want to escape. It's like a really awful place to live. It's like a labyrinth and it's hard to get out of and it's like run by drug lords and just like gangs and bad people and it sounds so awesome. When they were talking about it, it just really sounded like a fast-paced, really good novel. The next one is the one I'm most excited for is Salt and Storm by Kendall Culper. And one of the things that they said about it was if you really like um, historical fiction but with like magic that this is a good one. And I am like I love historical fiction and I'm totally down with magic. So this sounds amazing. Set in like the Victorian era. The main character is a witch. Her mom really doesn't want her to use her magic and so she kind of forces her to be magic free until the main character dreams that she is going to be murdered and so she knows she has to unlock her magic uh, so that she's able to save herself. They were really really excited about this one and it made me really really excited about this one and it sounds 
amazing and I had not heard of this one before BEA so I was very excited to hear about this. The next is Gloria O'Brien's History of the Future by A.S. King. I really love A.S. King. It is about a girl who has had a rough life. Her mom committed suicide. She has no plans for her future until something happens where she's able to see a person's infinite past and future. She can see like her ancient ancestors and to the people that are like thousands of years in the future and she sees some awful awful things in the future and she tries to really like write down what she sees because she really does not want the world to end up the way that she sees it she hopes that like maybe her notes will save the generations to come after her A.S. King is a brilliant writer and so I'm very excited god I've said excited a lot I am stoked for this one I'm stoked. Next one is Famous in Love by Rebecca Searle. It's about a girl who kind of is a very obscure actress and suddenly she finds herself the lead character in a best-selling novel's adaptation to the big screen. She's filming in Hawaii, she has hot co-stars, and suddenly her life has just really, really, really changed and like the love triangle in the movie kind of could be playing out um, in real life. When the girls are talking about this one, they just said how much fun it was. And I really like fun books and I love Hollywood-esque books. I cannot wait to read this one. It sounds like a ton of fun. Next is Wildlife by Fiona Wood. Aussie, young adult. I am beyond beyond excited. God, I need to come up with a better word than excited. One day I'm going to use a thesaurus before I do a video. This is already published in Australia and some of my Aussie blogger friends have said such incredible things about it and I have been dying to read it and now it is available in the United States. On the back it says for fans of Milena Marchetta, Rainbow Rowell, and E. Locker and I'm like, oh my god, I love all of those authors. So I think this is going to be a win for me, as is most of the Aussie books I've read, because I really pick out the ones that the people I trust say are amazing. So this is one of them, and you should check it out if you have not read any Aussie young adult fiction. The next one I received from Macmillan at their cocktail hour called A Little Something Different. And it's about a group of people who have, they don't, I don't think they really know each other, but they have one thing in common, they really want these two people to get together. It's a romance and it sounds really, really sweet and fun. The next is from the Simon & Schuster lunch that I was able to go to, and this big boy was there. Afterworlds by Scott Westerfeld. Look at that. It is like two novels in one. It's about a girl who writes a book, and then also... The chapters are the book. So the two stories are woven together. So it's amazing. And people who have started reading it are just floored by how amazing it is. So I'm a little intimidated by this, how big it is. Um, but I will do it. I will read it. The next one is Sublime by Christina Lauren. I honestly don't know that much about it. It was in the goodie bag. And while they were talking about it, I was so focused on eating my lunch that I know that I sat there and said, oh, this sounds good, but I really don't remember the details because I was so hungry that all I could think about was the sandwich in front of me. So I should have probably read up on this one, but you know, we do things on the fly here on this channel. The next one is Poison Princess by Cresley Cole. They were uh, talking about Cresley Cole's I, don't, I forget what number it is in that series. So they gave us all the first one, which I really appreciated because sometimes it sucks to get a fifth in a series of something you've never read. So now I have a chance to read this, which is excellent because I asked some readers on Twitter if they had ever read it and overwhelmingly people were like, it's an awesome series, you have to read it. There's like prophecy and tarot cards, apocalypse. I'm really happy to have gotten my hands on it because I had never heard of it before. The next one is Black Ice by Becca Fitzpatrick. I've never read any of her books before, but she was really nice and her presentation was really great. It sounds like it's going to be a page turner. Next is Compulsion by Martina Boone. It's about a girl whose mother, who was a shut-in, dies and 
Um, she goes and lives with her aunt who lives in a South Carolina plantation. This plantation is like guarded by an ancient spirit who cursed one of the founding families of the plantation and gave the other ones like magical gifts. And so she finds herself in like these like generation old feud of these spirits and these old families. I had never heard of this one prior to BEA and it sounded very interesting. So I'd be curious, have any of you heard of this or read it? Um, the presentation made it seem really interesting, so I am hoping that it is going to be as good as it sounds. The next set of books and my last are ones that I received at the YA party, formerly called the Rooftop Party. And there was a huge goodie bag, but I had a lot of the books, and so I gave them away. But the ones that I did keep are Dare You To by Katie McGarry. I've read Pushing the Limits, like, before it came out, and I liked it, um, and I've heard good things about this one, too, so I want to finish... The series. And the next is Open Road Summer by Emery Lord, a book that is one of my favorites this year. It is excellent, excellent, excellent. And I am so happy to have a finished copy now. It's about a girl who goes on the road with her best friend who's like a Taylor Swift-esque kind of country singer, up and, up and coming country singer. And she meets a boy on the road who is also her friend's like fake boyfriend for the tabloids and it was just so sweet and a perfect summer read so if you have not read this you should. Next is The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender. I have never heard of this. I have no idea what it's about other than I think somebody, I think April from Good Books and Good Wine said it was good and that I'd like it but I only kept it because this cover is so beautiful. It is so beautiful. So I have not looked at it since I got it from BEA, but I'm going to look it up on Goodreads. The next one is The 57 Lives of Alex Wayfair. I had heard of this one, but I didn't really know what it was about. And when I read the back of it, I was very intrigued. It's about a girl who is able, she's been having these visions and she, she can feel like she's, you know, on a ferry to America or, um, just somewhere in the past and she really like feels it and she finds out that she is a person that is capable of time traveling to her past lives but the more she keeps traveling back to these lives she's finding some sort of opposing force or person that does not want her to keep doing it. Next is Virgin. I had never heard of this one but I read the back of it and it's set in college which I'm always looking for books set in college and it's about a girl who's 21 She's in college and she's still a virgin and she is doing everything she can to lose that virginity. But apparently it's really funny. Although I'm not going to lie, from the cover I kind of thought it was like something more sinister. And then I read the back and I was like, oh this is going to be a funny book. I am very intrigued about this one. So that is my BEA book haul. If you have any questions about any of the books I talked about or if you've read them or heard things about them, let me know. I'd love to hear what book you would have most wanted if you went to BEA or if you did go to BEA, what book you were most excited to bring home. So that's all for me and now I have to go find homes for all these books because my husband is sick of staring at them in a pile on our kitchen table. Tough life of bookworm man. It was lovely meeting some of you at BEA, and I wish I could have met more of you. I had such a great time, but I am so happy to be home and get to reading these books. Hope you're reading something good. Bye!